welcome 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 back to another video with that's awkward a s m r today we're going to be unboxing the playstation 5 and i'm going to give you some of my quick and first impressions of the console so let's get into it my box uh, is white i do have the disc version if it was discless it would be black pretty standard box uh, one side has the ps5 logo with the, uh, some information about what's inside. The back says play like never before with the storage um, option there and showing the PlayStation 5 and then going into lightning speed, uh, SSD, 3D audio, stunning graphics, typical for back of the box. Then we have the PlayStation 5 standing with the DualSense and the PS5 logo on the other side and then back to the front with the PlayStation there. Um, pretty, pretty standard. My box actually was, uh, I don't know, like, it seemed like it was put together pretty quick and was falling apart, but I had just taken it out of the box, um, so that was weird. Um, but there's just one sticky tab on the top, and you open it up and you kind of, uh, take the handle and pull it out of that box. This box is huge, way, like, it's just huge, so... You know, you might need space to open it up. The inside box is pretty, pretty sleek with just the PlayStation logo and white all around, a lot like the PlayStation 4. Um, and you just open the top tab and then basically unfold the top ones, um, like folds. This box is so big, I had to open it sideways. Um, so in the top there, you'll, you'll get a little, like a smaller box that has your controller, HDMI cables and things, so we'll get to that in a moment. Um, and then there's the PS5 inside, and it, I actually was kind of nervous when I saw how this was packed. It's kind of a cheap packing, and I was kind of nervous that if it got shaken around in shipping, like, if just those two little cartons would really protect it, because there was nothing in the shipping box, like, it was basically the same size as the box that you just saw. So I was kind of stressed out, uh, like, I, like I was just kind of nervous. So far my system works fine, but it kind of made me nervous, like if in shipping it was dry, I don't know, dropped. Like, I don't know if those would protect it, but once you take those two things off, there is nothing else at all. It's just the wrapping. So once you unwrap that, you will see your PlayStation 5. Um, again, this is the disc version, so there's that afterthought bump on the side there. Um, but there it is. It looks way better in person, um, but it's a really nice design with the um, PlayStation logo. I really like that touch on one panel. The back has your standard ports, um, place for the fan, um, and then the front um, have the on and off buttons, etc. Um, in the box, you will get your power cable. You will also get your manuals. I recommend you read those if you are a first time console owner. If not, you know it's in them. You can just put them to the side. Um, then in the other compartment, you will get the stand, which you must use regardless of how you stand up this console. Your HDMI cable is also there. Um, and uh, the stand is actually really, really um, interesting. We're going to get into it more. Um, but you know, you just slide it out of the package there, and it pretty much will just go on, but I'll show you that in a minute. Um, but it, it, it uh, has grips on the bottom to make sure your PlayStation doesn't move, so it's important. Um, there was also a USB-C charging cable for your DualSense, which was nice for that to be included. Um, and the DualSense, which I just ripped open because I wanted to see it so bad in person. And it is very, very comfortable. We will get into that more later in the video, but it is, a, I think, a huge improvement on the DualShock. It's way more comfortable, um, and obviously the DualSense with all of its capabilities is quite amazing, but uh, it's so comfortable. That was the first thing I noticed when I held it in my hands. Um, very, very much better than the DualShock. Um, to do the stand, there's just pretty simple instructions. Um, at the bottom of your PlayStation, there's a, like a little circle. If you're going to stand it up, this is how you do it. Um, you just pop that off. Um, you can actually just stick that into your stand. There's a little place for it, a little hole if you just rotate the stand, and a little screw, which is where you will screw it into the bottom of your um, PlayStation. 
Um, it took me a minute to get that screw out, but when I did get it out, it wasn't very big at all. In fact, the actual screwing portion was very, very uh, short, so very interesting. Um, to install was really easy. You just line it up. It slides in it, like really easy and you just screw it in. But I just really need to reiterate, even if you put this sideways, you must, must use the stand because that thing can slide around. Um, and that's about it for its unboxing. Um, pretty, pretty standard unboxing. Um, it looks, again, way better in real life. It's kind of hard to get a nice shot of it, I found. Um, but I think it looks pretty good. It just, it is very big, um, indeed. So, uh, the size of it is about three, um, like, um, cases. Like, p the, the PS5 and PlayStation 4 cases are the same size, so I'd say about three of those stacked is the size. Um, I did notice actually one thing is my disk drive is very loud when it first starts and when it's uh, loading a game and then it's silent, um, but I'm gonna let you hear it for a minute because it is very loud. So I don't know if that is defective. A lot of people across the board have said that's an issue. I think it's actually just the way it's made, but I just wanted to let you know about that disk drive. But other than that, the PlayStation has been very silent. Um, so I wanted to give a quick comparison of the PlayStation 5 and the PlayStation 4. Um, Fortnite was optimized for the PlayStation and it was for the PS5 and the DualSense was also optimized. Um, you could feel kind of like a pullback when you would go to um, fire a weapon. Um, it was a very interesting feeling. It wasn't like each weapon felt different, unfortunately. Um, but it was, you know, obviously a difference in how I'm used to playing. Uh, again, you can see in graphics, like, it looks very, very clean. Um, PlayStation, again, is on the left, and it looks very, very nice. Um, very smooth. Um you know, it just looks much better. Um, even if you can tell on the character, there, there's light reflections, um, that you just don't see on the PS4. Um, so a very, very big improvement, um, looks very different and runs very, very well. Um, and it, it feels really nice with the dual sense, um, like the triggers kind of lock and you can kind of feel a pullback as, as you fire. Um, but it's not as extensive as anything like the Astro's Playroom was, um, so I would have liked to see that, but it, it was, did feel like a newer experience, and it obviously looks amazing with ray tracing and everything inside of the game. Um, so the next game that I wanted to test was Spider-Man. This mode is the 60 frames per second on the PlayStation 5 and the PlayStation 4, uh, I believe runs at 30. Um, you can see a huge, huge difference in the uh, too, obviously, um, you know, just in the way the camera looks when it's moved, um, even reflections. Um, there are two modes with the remastered version of Spider-Man. There's, um, one where it's 60 frames per second and one where you can have, um, all the reflections and everything look better, which is what you're seeing right now. It just changed, um, for PlayStation. So now it's like ray tracing is turned on to max. Like this is the most pretty looking, but it runs at, I think, 30 frames. Um, the 60 frames runs so, so nice, and it still looks so, so nice that, honestly, I'd probably run it at 60 frames, um, just because it felt smoother, but it still is absolutely amazing running at, uh, 30 on the PlayStation 5. So, the DualSense, um, just feels so comfortable, like I said before, um, it, it, you know, the way that it feeds back different, um, things like wind or getting stuck in mud or pulling back a bow and arrow, it, it really is a different experience and it's not at all gimmicky like I thought it would be. It actually does add to the experience of gaming without being too distracting. Um, so I'm going to do a quick sound test.
So those buttons are like near silent. You can barely hear them. Something else I noticed is the light is white on the PlayStation 5. It is not blue like it was marketed. It's blue as you can see for the first couple seconds when it turns on and then it fades to white. So, you know, that was kind of, I thought I, I was kind of like, that, that's kind of sad. But all in all, I really, really like the PlayStation 5. The DualSense is a huge upgrade. It's quieter. It's, you know, it's, it's the most next-gen thing we've gotten so far. Um, and I'm having a good time with it. So I'd recommend, you know, save up. It is expensive, but save up and, you know, when newer games come out, more games come out, definitely take a look at getting a PlayStation 5. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I hope you have sweet, sweet dreams.